Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the airport problem, task item number one, and our student scaffolding strategy of making sense with models. I'm going to begin with how we led into this problem. I actually started by asking them how many students remember that we used to have an airport. Of course, most of them said no, because actually it was there before they were born. And what they actually realized is that their current middle school, which is on the right hand side here, is what came out of them repurposing this airport. So I've already got them thinking about this and, you know, airports, what happened to them, where are they? And from there, we transitioned into the actual part of the project. So this is the actual picture that I gave them. And you can see that I started with a check-in. What's happening in this image? Students talked about mileage. They noted the scaling of the axes. And they also found that they had three towns that were connected by three highways. Then we actually took a look at the actual question. So they were given two options. In the first option, their airport will be placed equidistant from the vertices or towns in our case. In the second option, the airport will be placed equidistant to the highways or the sides of this triangle. And they had to construct this location. And after that, they had to use algebra to prove where this location was. And then finally, they came back through and said, okay, well, I know the price of building new roads. I know the price of resurfacing old roads. Based on this combination, what's going to be the cheapest place to put my airport? However, students had a lot of trouble with the algebraic nature, and this is where the modeling comes into play. I'm going to show that on the next slide. After I had them construct the location of the airport that was equidistant to the towns, I then said, well, let's prove it with algebra. Now, granted, most students didn't remember how to do that, so I used this as my model, and in fact, I modeled it twice. I did it once on the projector, and again the next day on the whiteboard to make sure they saw it twice. In the first one, I went ahead and said, okay, let's take a look at the side BC. Let's find its slope, negative reciprocal slope. Let's find the midpoint. And again, while I'm doing all this, I'm talking out loud and I'm saying, why am I doing this? And I'm saying what I am doing. After I found these parts, we had them put it together into point slope form because of course we need a linear equation. From there, I said, well, let's isolate a variable. Let's solve for y. And when we do that, we're going to get out slope intercept form which is what most students are more familiar with. Again, another use of models. Well, after we did this, I said, well, let's use this entire process again. Again, a use of a model. So this time they went ahead and said, okay, let's find the next slope, the next negative reciprocal slope, and the next midpoint. Put it all together, point slope form, solve for y, slope intercept. Well, at this point I said, okay, we've got two lines what are we going to do with them? Well, we already know that they have to cross. That's what our construction showed. So because these lines are crossing, well, let's set them equal to each other. And in fact, we can do this because we're using substitution back from algebra. They're both equal to y. And this problem was very useful because now that I'd done it fully, completely with them, we went ahead and said, OK, well, you're going to use the same concept later on. Of course, the next thing they saw, they had to apply a little twist to it. The next time I saw it, they were asked to find the intersection of old roads and new roads. And in that one, they no longer needed the midpoint, but they still had to use negative reciprocal slopes. They still had to use point slope form. They still had to solve for y and then use substitution. And I think going through this in class twice made it a lot easier for a lot of students. Without that repetition, they would have gotten a bit lost, especially for students who weren't there the first day. So it took a bit more time, but I think it was well worth it. And again, when I'm saying I'm using modeling, I'm showing them how I'm thinking, I'm showing them what I'm doing, and I'm telling them explicitly, use this entire problem as a, you know, a jump off point, a model for how to do a problem later on in the same project.